All right, folks, I'm here today with Dr. Stefan Neurmeyer, uh, a great uh, dentist, uh, prosthodontist and surgeon, and almost uh, a man of all tricks, a dentist of all tricks, uh, practicing here in Germany. And I got a chance, uh, Stefan, to see some of the cases you had done, and I wanted to kind of sit down with you and quickly have a chat about a couple of these interesting cases that you had done. So you worked a lot on the whole concept of extrusion, which is very important. And it's one that has not been, it's probably one of the most underutilized procedures in all of dentistry. But you have four endodontics, you have a whole new concept of doing it, which is kind of rapid extrusion. So why don't we go through a case that you had done, for example, right now, and then we can then talk about the, the, the way you go about doing these, okay? So yeah, this is a farmer, he came uh, years ago in, to my practice and he was asking me, could, could... You know, after over 600 videos that I've made, you would think I've already figured this out. So I'm here back home editing this video and I'm just realizing that the audio just cut out right when I, we were about to begin talking about these cases that Dr. Nurmeyer had done. So uh, I guess uh, first my apologies to Dr. Nurmeyer. So I don't know what happened, but unfortunately uh, the audio cut out. I think probably it was a loose connection. These kinds of things do happen. Um, uh, but I don't want the wonderful work that Dr. Nurmeyer had done to go to waste here. So what I'm gonna do is I've, uh, I'm using the, uh, the slides and the cases that he showed and I'm just gonna essentially try to explain everything that he talked about in this little video coming up. Okay, after the technical problems, at least let's spend a few minutes here to go over some of the work of Dr. Nurmeyer and appreciate his ability to impose some of the concepts of forced eruption into trying to save teeth in a different way than we have in the past. And I'll talk and basically add my two cents to it as well. Start with this first patient, as you can see here, has a very large and approximal carious lesion, and that essentially has destroyed all the distal aspect of the premolar and the mesial aspect of the first molar. Usually, if I see a patient like this, I will basically tell the patient the prognosis is really poor, and the options are here discussed in terms of extraction and implants versus a real attempt at saving these teeth, which would entail probably for most people some type of crown lengthening to address the biological width issue and then root canal therapy, post and core buildup or just core buildup followed by crowns. And here that's really the issue. And uh, as you can see, that this is the kind of a biological width that we have. And we need to, uh, in order to have a uh, successful result, we need to build that up. Normally, technically, we've in the past removed bone to do this, but forced eruption is the concept that Nurmeyer has been uh, championing and working. And it it involves doing a little bit of fibrotomy first uh, to remove some of the gingival fibers that are attaching the tooth to allow fast surgical eruption. The main difference between a this type of a rapid uh, forced eruption versus the typical type of extrusion that people talk about. The extrusion principles uh, that are done currently involve slow eruption that also brings up the alveolar crest of bone up. That's typically what's done a lot of times for implants, preparation sites, by adding some vertical height of bone. But for endodontics, uh, what we want to do, we want to do rapid extrusion. And according to Nurmeyer, this is a concept that he does within about a week or maximum two weeks, depending on how long the roots are. So by adding elastics, he's pulling these teeth up rapidly after fibrotomy. And for the most part, about a week, they are at a place that they can be. And then from that point, you stabilize them for about four to six weeks and then you're ready to go. So essentially what he did in this particular case, in that area, he did, uh, as you can see on the distal, it's not a problem, it's more between the interproximal area and the frication as well. But uh, what he did is he tried to erupt these for several millimeters over the protocol that I just explained to you, which is rapid extrusion using elastics and all and he went on to explain the technique, and I will share with you his slides, is he has added a good three to four millimeters here by that extrusion. You can see the outline of the original socket underneath the premolar, and that is going to fill up with bone very quickly. And so now what he has is he has an extruder root that is far superior to having crown lengthening in this area. And these teeth are now ready to go. So you can see the sites and the tooth where it has moved from where to where about in about four days. So that's how rapid the extrusion principles are here. And the same thing here in the molar where it has moved this one. But on the molar, because of the fact that you have more surface area and maybe sometimes curved roots, that it has taken a little bit longer, 12, uh, 12 days. Uh, the crystal bone has not uh, changed appreciably, as you can see, and that's really the goal 
but it will over time as the root has been brought up will probably kind of follow a little bit and go up in time and so this is the final results that he achieved in restoring these two teeth if you will after having achieved adequate biological width and now this teeth according to what he told me have been now around for a good six seven years that has been following up in this case and you can see here that the bone is remodeled now completely at the uh, apical area of the roots and both teeth are doing well. So that's it. This is essentially the concept of extrusion versus surgical crown lengthening. And the advantages of that clearly are the fact that in crown lengthening, you are removing bone. And by removing bone, even though you're trying to create an ar a positive architecture, bony architecture, you are creating these discrepancies in the alveolar bone line, as well as in some of the molars, you might be creating problems such as frication exposure. Here, by doing an extrusion, on the other hand, you're maintaining the alveolar bone as well as the overall architecture, but you are gaining that additional root surface that you're going to use to create your ferrule, which is what's going to give you your retention. And crown lengthening will also increase the length of that crown. So the ratio for the most part remains the same if you think about it this way, except that all of a sudden with crown lengthening, you have a very long crown, uh, but the root size and ratio remains the same. So this I'm not sure is a uh, crown lengthening is by no means superior to a forced eruption. That's an eruption technique that Nurmeyer has been explaining. But uh, the only advantage is that it is a little bit more convenient. It doesn't require require uh, additional visits for elastics management and things like that. But the forced eruption, in my opinion, as well as Dr. Normeyer's opinion, is superior to crown lengthening. So you can see that what you end up having also with crown lengthening is having a variable scalloping of the gingival margin that's not quite as good. So let's talk about the technique and how it's done. You know, there's been many ways to kind of achieve this kind of extrusion. Even people thought about using magnets or using springs to achieve this. Dr. Normeyer's technique is fairly straightforward and very very simple. It involves the use of a couple of fiber posts and then an elastic of various lengths depending on the speed and the force that you want to exercise here. And as you can see here, the diagram for what it is from an engineering um, point of view, you are using a vertical bar that you stabilize on the two adjacent teeth. And then you put a kind of a T-shaped post that you will adhere or bond to the surface of the tooth in question. You're trying to erupt and have a couple of buttons on the side. And then you put the elastic over both and that is going to do the extrusive force. Forces. There's very little discomfort according to what uh, I asked Dr. Nurmeyer about this and this is going to create this eruption process if you do a little bit of fibrotomy as well around it with a scalpel to cut off any attachments, gingival attachments that should happen fairly quickly as he mentioned usually most of the time about four to seven days and then in some cases it could take up to two weeks if they're curved. And this is all the ingredients that are needed, a T, a bar and then another post with a couple of buttons buttons on the side. This is not yet available commercially, but this is essentially the concept that you can achieve using Dr. Normeyer's technique by bonding a post and then using vertical bar on the on top to then loop an elastic over. And again, the load of the elastic is dependent on the speed at which you're gonna wanna do the eruption. So that's pretty much it for provisionalization. You can create, uh, you can put some type of a provisional and bond it to the adjacent teeth. Alternatively, you can create an SX appliance and that goes over it. It's a very short period of time. Uh, for the original eruption and then stabilization for a few weeks after would be ideal. So you are creating a, after you've done the eruption originally, then he, I, uh, you know, he's recommending fixation of the tooth for a period of uh, six weeks. And I would probably think some kind of a um, physiological splint would be helpful in this case, or you could do a um, rigid splint, but I guess physiological would probably create less issues with um, potential ankylosis and other issues. But this is a case, and he showed me plenty of cases that he had done, and he's done a great job, as well as work with implants in trying to build the collar and bringing up the bone. But this concept makes sense because this concept has been uh, described in endodontics for many years in terms of intentional implantation. This is exactly what we do. And forced eruption, when it's done for endo, should be in controlled 
intentional replantation in which you're basically quickly extracting the tooth and bringing it up and then fixating it for uh, four to six weeks. And that's going to allow, again, the formation of new bone underneath that tooth. That tooth's gonna get stabilized. And the advantages are that instead of having to uh, grind down the bone around the tooth and then place your crown on uh, deep on the root and on the cementum, here you're bringing the root up. At times you're gonna end up potentially being able to put more of the crown on the enamel and only on the portion that is deep, putting it on cementum on the root surface. Anyway, I wanna thank Dr. Nurmeyer for sharing this technique and we wanted to kind of have him involved in sharing this and I apologize to him for my technical problems. I'm sure we're gonna have him uh, over and I'll probably host him on a different, uh, maybe a Zoom call or something like that to talk about some of his implant cases. All right guys, I hope this was helpful to you and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.